Okay, so let's talk about question six <coughs> of the tutorial. So we're asked to consider a phase diagram of water and then to answer the questions um, given here. So let's just quickly look at the phase diagram. So there's a quite standard phase diagram. We see that there's the triple point um, is here at A. And then of course we have our three um, sections of it, the solid area, the liquid area, the vapor region. Um, of course, and then the critical point at top here, um, and then specific points on the diagram are indicated for us, um, so we may use them, right, if we uh, require some specific points, right. So the first question asks, what phase of water do you expect to be stable at 25 degrees Celsius and one bar? So the diagram is not necessarily to scale, but we can make some reasonable assumptions regarding that. So 0, so 0 0.01 degrees Celsius is here, 100 is here, so 25 degrees Celsius is probably around about there. So 25 is probably about there, and one bar is luckily already indicated for us there, so if we follow that up to there, we see we're somewhere around about here. Um, so if we go to, well, so in other words, 25 degrees Celsius and one bar, we're solidly in the liquid phase. Um, so in other words, only the liquid phase will be present for water at these conditions. According to the phase diagram, no other phase will be present. Um, <coughs> and that's, so if we have a container at these conditions, then we'll have these, uh, well, only liquid water will be present. All right. Um, then... B asks, given what that the standard molar Gibbs energy of formation of water vapor at 20, 298 Kelvin, so 25 degrees Celsius, is minus 229 kilojoule per mole. So that is for water vapor. So let's just make a note. So Gm, so let's just call it VAP. I know it's not necessarily our notation, but it's just for us to have some sort of notation, so that is minus 229, and that of liquid water, so Gm, um, uh, let's call it, it's not actually, so vapor is perhaps not, maybe, maybe call it gas, <laughs> just going to call it gas, so we have an idea, and then um, we just have an idea of liquid, this is not really what it is, but it's just so that we have reference when I'm going to talk about it, what is what. Would you expect any water vapor to be present at these conditions? Explain why or why not. So standard molar Gibbs energy, so of course standard, right, implies um, that we're at one bar pressure. So we just looked at 25 degrees Celsius and one bar, um, and that showed us that we're at the liquid, in the liquid um, phase um, on the diagram. So in other words, we don't expect any vapor to be present because we're at this pressure and temperature combination. We expect liquid water to be um, solely present um, in a container, specifically at that. But, uh, and then further, so in other words, firstly from that point of view, but then in terms of the Gibbs energy that we're given our Gibbs energy of liquid formations in other words the formation energy of liquid is more negative than the gas so just meaning basically this value here at the bottom is more negative than the one here at the top so the formation of liquid is more spontaneous than that of gas um, or vapor um, at 25 degrees Celsius and one bar, then, well, the, the liquid is more forms more spontaneously than gas. So if you have some gas present, it will be more inclined to condense and form the liquid phase at these conditions than, um, yeah, than anything else. Okay, so that gives us an idea that we expect um, basically only liquid phase to be present at these conditions, not really any water vapor to be formed um, 
had these conditions given you know the physics firstly the phase diagram argument and then these values to be interpreted as well because the gives energy gives us an equation of spontaneity and then the spontaneity in indicates that the water vapor should spontaneously um, condense should it should there be anything present all right C asks, what would happen if we take water at its triple point and heat it at a, at a constant pressure? Explain broadly what you expect to happen. So now if we start here at the triple point, so the triple point here is at A, and we heat it at a constant pressure. So in other words, we take it like that, and we do something like that to it. What do we expect to happen? Well, um, First, we'll see we go from three phases, right? So we're here at the triple point. We have solid, liquid, and vapor present. But the moment we heat it even by 0.0000001 degree Celsius, then we will lose the solid and the liquid phases and immediately only have the vapor phase present um, in the mixed world. Only the vapor phase will be present. Right, so at, th at the specific pressures, in other words, at 0 0.006 bar, if we just heat it only slightly, we'll so go from three phases to one phase, and then we will only have the one phase until some point, you know, here beyond the critical temperature, um, or actually beyond that critical temperature, where water will eventually decompose, actually. Um, we will have the you know somewhere here somewhere in the wherever where water will eventually decompose um, wh wherever that temperature actually lies um, not sure what that is you can look up what the decomposition temperature of water is yeah so that's essentially what will what we expect to happen how many phases are present at B well B lies on a um, boundary a phase boundary specifically the liquid vapor boundary so we expect two phases to be present um, these two phases are in equilibrium at a point like b so in other words the both vapor and liquid present um, that's really the only thing that you can say there um, how many degrees of freedom do we have at point b what does this imply for any substance subsequent changes to the system well um, to calculate the number or the degrees of freedom so then we need to use the Gibbs phase rule of course so the Gibbs phase rule states that F is equal to C minus P plus 2 and of course the number of components is 1 we just have water in the system number of phases is 2 because we're at a phase boundary we have vapor and we have liquid phases and then there's a two so these two cancel and then we just have one so we just have one degree of freedom and that one degree of freedom means that we can move along this phase boundary line but we cannot move in either <coughs> so it means we can change the pressure and the temperature um, proportionally to one another on this phase boundary and then we will remain we will have that degree of freedom so in other words we can keep the equilibrium but the moment that we change either the pressure or the temperature then we will lose that equilibrium so in other words then we've you know lost whatever the what the system was so that is what the, what the second part of the question asks. so what does this imply for any subsequent changes so it means that we if we change we must change pressure and temperature in an equal ratio so that it changes um, within the requirements of the system to remain on the um, vapor or the liquid vapor boundary line. If we change only temperature or pressure, then we will um, disturb the, the equilibrium of the system and then resort to either only liquid or vapor, depending on how we've changed the system. I mean, you can explain it specifically. You can say if we increase only the temperature, we will have only vapor. If we decrease only the pressure, we'll have only vapor. And if we increase only the pressure, we'll have only liquid. And if we decrease only the temperature, we'll have only liquid. Right. So that's basically 
the changes that we can see <coughs> for the system. Okay. And then finally, consider the path D, E, F, G. Explain in detail what happens at each point, i.e. what are the relevant phases and changes that occur with each step. So that's just this path that I've drawn here. Um, so at point D, we're in the vapor phase. So we have one phase. Then we have um, isobaric heating. Um, so isobaric meaning at constant pressure. We have uh, or cooling, my apologies. We have isobaric cooling to point E, then we have a solid. So we have a solid phase at point E, so only the solid phase is present um, all the way to point. So then, and then we have both an increase in pressure and an increase in temperature, um, which leads to a liquid phase. Um, so only the liquid phase present at F. And then finally, we're here in this um, critical region, which is that's a very badly drawn critical region. So the critical region, of course, is that block there, or that area there, so where G lies. And that's the area where there's no distinction anymore between liquid and vapor. It has properties of both, but there's no distinction between the liquid and vapor. And it becomes a supercritical fluid, or, you know, a supercritical fluid. So <coughs> G is in the critical region, um, it's, and called the critical phase. So which results from further heating and increase of the pressure from F. So, yeah, um, you can read the notes for like a nice broad discussion on each of these things and exactly how I would like you to answer a typical question like this. This is just a discussion and sort of like how you need to draw or you can draw on the phase diagram to see um, the changes for yourself. Um, <coughs> but yeah, this is uh, typically how you go about just arguing these things um, on for yourself okay remember these questions ask explain and whatever they just this doesn't doesn't just mean just give the answer it means really you need to explain and discuss and give a reason as to why you're saying something so it means you need to write a lot you can't just give the answer say no or yes or one phase or something like that you need to explain why exactly you are stating what you are stating and really prove that you understand what you are in fact doing okay